I have been willing my period to come so much that I have been imagining period cramps. Ah, fuck it. I have been trying to manifest my period. Who cares? Whatever, let's just use withdrawal. That was that little eager embryo. Went to the toilet, dropped my pants. <gasps> oh my goodness. Hello everybody, welcome back. It's another episode of The Hormone Diaries. I just wanted to start off by firstly saying thank you so much for all of the love and support on the first video. I was a bit nervous uploading it. I wasn't entirely sure if I made the right decision sharing the news that we were trying to conceive even when I'm not pregnant yet, but you just made it so much easier, so. Thank you. It's been really lovely hearing from some of you who are also trying to conceive. It definitely makes me feel like I'm not alone in this, which I imagine that if it's something that you are keeping secret, you could feel quite isolated. But even just like talking to my friends about it, just like, oh, I've got my period. And they like know what that means to me and can just like be there to support it. Like it helps, it helps. So I'm actually posting this video way earlier than I expected to tried to film another video this morning where I was making a silicone mold out of my vulva and that didn't go to plan. <laughs> um, maybe in the future you will see that video if I have a successful attempt, but I was like, shit, need a video. But I got that Hormone Diaries footage ready to go. So let's take us back in time again to like July, August time, 2020. Oh, summer. So if you haven't watched the first video in the new series of The Hormone Diaries, I would highly recommend because this video basically just jumps off where we left off on the journey. The clips you're about to see show the next couple of months that followed after I got my coil taken out and leading up to our wedding. We have the first negative pregnancy test, getting used to condoms or not, as you shall see. And did I get my period on my wedding day? Ooh, cliffhanger. <laughs> I got the coil taken out because we want to try for a baby, not yet though, but because last time it took so long for my body to kind of come back to normal and also my menstrual cycle is fairly long and also pretty irregular, I just wanted to like give my body enough time to get back into it without any hormonal contraception. And so this meant for the time being using condoms. Here's the thing, I don't really mind them. They're just like an extra step, but when you've not been using them for like three and a half years, you're just not used to it. <laughs> yeah, we didn't, we didn't like it. It was, it was fine. It just like, it just wasn't what we were used to. And it just like felt weird. <laughs> it felt like going back to the beginning of the relationship where it was just like, oh my God, we have to use condoms. And we made like such a big deal out of it when we like finally were able to not use condoms like after we both got tested and after like I was, on contraception. So yeah, it felt like going backwards. It was a bit strange. Here's the thing. We were both weak. I'm not necessarily proud of it, but we had sex maybe once with a condom and then we like tried again. And I was literally just like, who cares? Whatever, let's just use withdrawal. And you might be thinking, Hannah, you're a sex educator. Like why are you using withdrawal? Withdrawal doesn't work. You are correct. However, withdrawal is better than not withdrawing at all. And me and Dan are in a position where if we did get pregnant, or if I got pregnant, it's not the end of the world. Like we actually are in the process of trying to get pregnant, even if we weren't like super, super actively trying. So it's not a huge deal. Cause if I did get pregnant, we would be like, great. It just happened earlier than we, you know, wanted it to. And that's absolutely fine. We were very weak and just couldn't use condoms. Ah, but then it gets worse. <laughs> Does it get worse? Is it, is it worse? Just exposing my weak mindedness. We maybe had sex and used withdrawal twice before we were just like, ah, fuck it. So I guess that means we're like technically properly trying, even though we're not like, trying, trying, like we're not making a conscious decision to have like more sex than 
we regularly do or like time the sex or anything like that we're just kind of continuing to go about our normal life maybe later down the line start making more of a conscious effort in terms of frequency and timing and tracking things and stuff but we're not doing that just yet mainly because we're getting married and as shallow as it seems i would like to drink alcohol at the wedding i would also like to drink alcohol on our honeymoon we're staying in a place that has a hot tub and you're not allowed in a hot tub if you're pregnant so yeah but it can take like up to a year for a lot of couples and we're kind of in the mindset of like that could be us so you know you have to kind of keep a very open mind of like could get pregnant tomorrow could have a lot of difficulty getting pregnant and like everything in between hello hannah from the present slash future here re-watching these clips i'm not sure if i was genuinely that chill at that time i feel like i come across as really relaxed and positive and hopeful in those clips and i can't tell if it's just me being not pregnant six months down the line who's just like oh naive naive little child because it's one thing when you're at the beginning of that journey to rationalize hey this could take up to a year like it could be really difficult for us it's one thing to rationalize that and then another to actually experience it and to really internalize that and emotionally accept it that is a lot harder like i can fully accept rationally it can be really difficult for some couples it can take up to a year maybe two years some couples can't get pregnant at all for whatever reason like i can say all of that stuff and i can know it am i happy about it no <laughs> no i am not and also i know when i watched those clips there was something in the back of my mind that i was too scared to admit to myself but i'll say it now I was obviously hoping that we would get pregnant first try and we'd be like, oops, a little earlier than expected because that's what happened when my parents conceived me. I was just like, bang, straight in there, attaching to that uterus. I was that little eager embryo. So being raised on that story from my parents of them being like, oh, we just like stopped using contraception and just like saw what happened and your mum got pregnant straight away and so like that's the story that i've grown up with and it's hard <laughs> when then that doesn't like translate to you which obviously it's not necessarily going to but it's hard when now that i admit to myself i fully had that in my head i was just like oh lol we're gonna start trying and then like oops oh my god we got pregnant straight away like that was kind of in the back of my head of what i thought would happen sex ed in schools definitely didn't help <laughs> the way that they made me feel like you had to avoid sperm at all costs otherwise you'd just get pregnant like that and here i am smothering myself in sperm every night and wondering why i'm not pregnant no. <laughs> oh god don't smother yourselves in sperm that doesn't help back to hannah six months ago literally right after we started having unprotected sex i had a dream that i gave birth um in a hospital and my baby was like taken to a different unit or something i don't know just like weird baby birth dreams i had a dream the other night that i went to ireland to visit my friend melanie who is pregnant we were out at like a, a social event like a social dance or something and she just gave birth there and then and it didn't hurt her at all <laughs> like the baby just slipped out hannah from the present future here again my friend melanie gave birth to a beautiful healthy baby boy She's got a ton of videos on her YouTube channel as well about her pregnancy, about the birth, about her postpartum experience. So if you're interested in that stuff, she does not hold back. She gives all of the details. And little baby is so cute and I can't wait for this pandemic to be over so I can go and meet him and see Mel. Okay, back to Hannah six months ago. I did actually take a pregnancy test um, the other day because I got really ill um, and my boobs started aching like pretty much on the same day or like around about the same time But I'm pretty sure my, my boobs are just aching as part of like my normal menstrual cycle um, Yeah, but I got like a really tight chest and I got really ill and um, I was like, well, I'm either pregnant or it's coronavirus <laughs> and so um, I made Dan go and get me a pregnancy test. It was negative um, but even like you know, we'd only literally started having unprotected sex. So I don't even think like anything would have shown up 
and then we also went and got COVID tests and they also came back negative so whew, I was just ill for a couple of days and then I got better so I am desperate to have my period oh my goodness it just please please come period I have been willing it I have been trying to manifest my period my tits have been hurting for over two weeks now I think today is the like it's been like two weeks and two days and my boobs are still hurting. Come the fuck on! Especially because I'm um, getting married this weekend and I just want the period to start so that it doesn't like happen by surprise on the wedding day. <laughs> if I still haven't started my period by the morning of the wedding, I'm just gonna put a menstrual cup in for the day and just be like, I'm, I'm ready, like just catch it. We're not getting blood on my underwear. Like I'm not doing the whole white dress thing, but I am doing white underwear. And I just really want my period to go now, please. Or in a week, but just not on Saturday. Just not on Saturday, please. So it's only been a day or two days since getting really frustrated about my period not coming, about my boobs aching, worrying about coming on my period on my wedding day. And I have been willing my period to come so much that I have been imagining period cramps. Like I actually think I'm getting cramps and I'm like, oh, this is it. Because for me, like the period starting and the cramps starting like happen simultaneously. Like it's just like, boom. I think I've started my period, I go to the toilet, no period. I have just imagined myself being in pain until now. So I went for a walk and was listening to a podcast. I think I was out for about an hour total and like halfway through, I was like, oh, period cramps maybe, but I'm still like in the back of my mind obsessing around my boobs hurting, obsessing around like when the fuck this period is gonna come. So I was like, Mm, maybe I'm imagining it, but it did feel a little bit more real. So I continued, continued on my walk. I was wearing cotton black underwear, so I'm like, I trust you to kind of catch the initial onslaught. Got home, went to the toilet, dropped my pants, saw the blood, and I literally went like this. I went, <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, finally, my boobs will hurt a lot less tomorrow and also will hurt a lot less probably not even hurt at all on wedding day now it is currently tuesday getting married on saturday which means i will be day four of my period on saturday by then i'm normally like pretty light however i'm probably still gonna put my menstrual cup in and just like wear that for the entire day because i'm wearing white underwear and I can't be bothered faffing around with a pad and like feeling a pad in my underwear all day. So I'll just pop a menstrual cup in for the entire day and that is fine. Okay, so let me input the data. I will really, oh my goodness. Guess how long this cycle has been. This, I've, guys, guys, my last cycle, was 31 days. I'm average. I think this is the first time I've had an average cycle. So today was day 31 and then I said I was bleeding. So now actually today is day one. So my last cycle was 30 days. 30 days, how average is that? Oh, the dream. My hunch, obviously, I don't know this for sure because I've never taken ovulation tests, but my hunch is that my boobs start hurting the day after I ovulate, or maybe the day of, who knows, but sometime around then, I think is when my boobs start hurting. And my theory is that it's my body punishing me for not doing its biological duty and getting pregnant. It's like, we had the fertile window, we ovulated, no pregnancy occurred, okay, now we're gonna hit you with the PMS, we're gonna hit you with the sore boobs, so you will learn your lesson and you will get pregnant next time. One more thing, <laughs> I was putting the menstrual cup in and I could feel that something wasn't quite right, like it hadn't 
fully popped open but I couldn't get my finger to like do the thing so I just left it and then as I was like putting my underwear back on and I was like standing up again I like felt I felt it inside me just like pop it was just like a sudden little like a inside me and I assume that I was right and it wasn't quite in place but then my body like it just pushed back in place or something I don't know it felt very strange and so that brings us to me being a married woman trying to get pregnant. How conventional, how conventional, I wanna throw up. So yeah, day four of my period on my wedding day was absolutely fine, wore the menstrual cup in all day, no problems. So even though I got the coil taken out in July, we started having completely unprotected sex mid-August. So that means we have been trying for five, six months, still trying, still trying. Not there yet. <laughs> but I wanted to briefly add on to what I was saying about the withdrawal method. If you are interested in looking at the effectiveness of different kinds of contraception over time, I would highly recommend this interactive New York Times article. It is from 2014, but not a lot has changed in the world of contraception. So I reckon that the data still stands. Let's <laughs> dive in in. This interactive thing is so cool. Honestly, check it out. It's so much fun to play around with. So what it does is it has lots of different kinds of contraception methods and then it shows you how many people, it says women, for every 100 women, the number who will have an unplanned pregnancy over a given number of years. So this is about an unplanned pregnancy and it has year one to year 10. But the really cool thing about it is that you can like slide across it, but the two different lines that you see, like the red line and then the dotted line, the dotted line is perfect use and the red line is typical use. So for perfect use for a condom, you'll get two in a hundred people will get pregnant after one year. For typical use, 18 out of 100 people will get pregnant in one year. And then it goes all the way up to 10 years. So in 10 years with perfect use, 18 out of 100 will get pregnant, but 86 out of 100 will get pregnant for typical use over a 10 year period. How wild is that? But then if you go down here, you can see for the copper IUD, sterilization, and the hormonal IUD and the hormonal implant, the lines for typical and perfect use are basically the same and that's because there is no use really of them. It's not something that you have to like use daily. You just kind of get it done and then that's it. So they do have a line for withdrawal and I wanted to compare this with like no contraception. And unfortunately this graph doesn't have that option. So if we take what the NHS says, which is that if you are actually trying 80% of people will get pregnant within the first year. So let's just say that's 80 out of 100. But obviously they're trying, whereas these people are not trying. <laughs> so 80 out of 100 will get pregnant in the first year if you are trying. If you're using withdrawal, perfect use, four in 100 will get pregnant after one year of perfect use. However, withdrawal is really hard to perfect. And typical use, 22 in 100 will get pregnant in that first year. And so 22 is obviously not zero, but it's also not 80, but also that 80 number isn't a perfect comparison to this, at least I don't think it is. But if you then look over 10 years, 92 in 100 people get pregnant after typical use of withdrawal over a 10 year period. Perfect use, 34 in 100. So as you can see, withdrawal can work, it's just really not very effective at all. But yeah, have a play around with this if you're interested in learning about the effectiveness of different contraceptions, perfect and typical use. It's very cool. Thank you for watching and thanks again so much for your support on this series and this process, this journey, and for also respecting my boundaries um, about sharing in the here and now kind of thing. But I will tell you here and now, I'm on my period, so. I'm not pregnant. <laughs> I hope that you're doing well and I'll see you in my next video, which won't be me creating a mold out of my vulva, but maybe a future video will be. Fingers crossed if I get the technique right, because I failed, I failed. All right, <laughs> bye. <laughs>